guys, today I'm going to review Quiet the Mask 2. Yes, what is it? Tell us. Inside those domes are creatures from outside this earth. Are you mad? I've seen them. Thousands of tiny creatures that can join together and expand into things 100 feet high. Quiet the Mask 2 came out in 1957 and is a black and white British sci-fi horror film. It was retitled Enemy from Space for the US and is a sequel to the 1955 film The Quiet Mass Experiment. It was made by Hammer Films. The director of the film was Val Guest who also did The Quiet Mass Experiment. Brian Donlevy also returns as Quiet Mass from the first film. The screenplay was by Nigel Neal and this is based on his 1955 TV serial. Quatermass 2 is noted for having a 2 in the title, one of the very first films to have done this. Nowadays it's commonplace to have a number at the end of the title. Music was by James Bernard. The film runs 85 minutes and cost £92,000 to make. The film was adapted into a 15 page comic strip for Hammer's Halls of Horror, Volume 2, Issue 23 in 1978. Nigel Neal is noted for not liking Brian Donlevy's performance as Quatermass and claims the actor's performance was marred by his alcoholism. Although the film did well, it was nothing compared to The Curse of Frankenstein that just came out the same year and the film got mixed reviews which divided the critics. The film stars Brian Donlevy, John Longdon, Brian Forbes, William Franklin, Vera Deer, Michael Ripper and Sid James in a serious role. So the plot of this one's about an alien conspiracy. Professor Bernard Quatermass, in his attempts to convince the British government to colonise the moon, learns of thousands of meteorites landing in the same location on Earth. When his colleague Marsh joins him in a quest to uncover the truth, they discover a government complex built around the landing spot. When Marsh goes missing, Quatermass attempts to rescue him and discovers the truth behind the alien invasion conspiracy and cover-up. So with it being about an alien conspiracy and about these people in high places that are taken over, it sounds a lot like Invasion of the Body Snatchers, where people are taken over, they're not who they are. And this film is a much bigger sequel to the original film. It's bigger in scope and it's a bit more faster moving. So Val Guest, the director, returns and he has a, a particular style to his films, a, a bit more realistic, documentary in feel. And of course Brian Donlevy returns for his second and final film as Quatermass. And this time he's, he's like more pushed into the action. There's uh, actually action sequences with him in. So he's running around dodging bullets. So he's definitely right in the middle of the, the danger this time. So he's more like an action hero. Although he's far from Tom Cruise. <laughs> but, um, he, he, there are scenes where he's getting shot at. So he's famous for battling alcoholism on the set. Brian Donlevy's alcoholism presented challenges for the production team which was also the case in the first film, The Quatermass Experiment. Nigel Neal recalls visiting the set one day. He says that Donlevy was so full of whiskey he could hardly stand up. He staggered over to the set and looked around dazedly. They held up an idiot board with his lines on. And he said, what's this movie called? And they said, well, it's called Quatermass 2. And he said, I've got to say all that. There's too much to talk. Cut down some of the talk. He tried to read his lines and he had to have a go after go after go. So crippled with drink he hardly knew who he was. The director Val Guest recalled that after lunch he would come and see me. Give me a breakdown of the story so far. Where have I been before this scene? He used to feed him black coffee all morning. But we all knew there was more in this coffee than just coffee. Joe, get across to the canteen and get some coffee. Mr. Quatermass is coming up from the launching base. One, better make it three, though, or one, some. Like some coffee. It's on its way. Uh, sir, it's about that meteorite. Hey, Phil, I wouldn't mind some of these coffee. Specially roasted. Mmm, for richer, smoother flavour. <laughs> yes, sir, that's what I would do, Nescafe. Mmm, 
So I say, why do you drink Nescafe then? Hey, Bones, cheers. Mmm. Wow, that's strong coffee. Harvey, want anything special for your birthday? Just a decent cup of coffee. Can't beat vodka. Yee, fancy getting bloody pissed on the film set. Did he think it was bloody Oliver Reed or something? Another <laughs> interesting thing about the film is the familiar faces. Michael Ripper pops up in one of his first performances for Hammer. He plays a barman. And he also pops up in the next film, The Quater Mass Experiment, playing a copper. Even Sid James pops up in the serious role. <laughs> Ironically enough, when you first see Sid, he's actually uh, intoxicated. Uh, he's here, Inspector Baker. All right. Hi, Zero. Good evening, Mr. Hall. Got any good charge sheets lately? Oh, nothing that you want to print. Trade you a drink for anything that'll fill one and a half columns before midnight. So it's almost as though the writers were taking the mickey out of the star. Brian Donovey, there's alcoholism. So the, they've got St. James trunk. <laughs> mm. There's a funny incident where Donovey's wig, his toupee, flew off. It was during the climax when they were using a wind machine and it blew his toupee off his head. Ha <laughs> ha! I wish I'd seen the drunken bugger's wig fly off. That would have been a get piss laugh. I will probably give it to you on Tuesday. Oh my God. William Franklin's in, and I remember he's in the Satanic Rites of Dracula. So that you get all these familiar faces that pop up. The guy who plays Jonathan Harker in Dracula, he pops up. James Bernard returns, scoring the film. He was in the first film, scoring that. Music's very much like a horror film, so... It's kind of a little bit kind of unsuitable really. I would have thought it would have been more of a sci-fi type of score. But it's very much a horror type of score. You can imagine Dracula popping up. There's even a little bit of gore. You see this guy who's like burnt and he's black. His body's pressed against the wall and you see this blood on the wall. That, that was quite gruesome for 1957. When uh, you see him, it reminds me of a scene in Doctor Who Inferno. In fact, Doctor Who, the third Doctor's character, was inspired by Quatermass. However, the climax of the film lets the film down a little bit. It's a bit too convenient about firing a rocket. So the conclusion of the story is a, a bit rushed. A bit like the first film, actually, where they just electrocute the creature at the end. And oddly enough, the print of the film that I was watching was a bit dark as well, a bit too dark in places, it was difficult to say what was going on. But overall I did think it was a good film, not a great film, but a good film, very similar to the first film. However this one's a bit more faster paced and I thought Brian Donnelly was better in this film than he was in the first film. His character was starting to grow on us, I, I start to like him at the end of the film. Especially the action sequences where you see him dodging bullets, that was quite funny. Especially when he looks pissed at times. <laughs> so overall I thought it was a slight improvement on the first film. So out of ten, I think I'd give it the same mark as the first film. A seven. Seven out of ten. But you did think Bones again like it. Hey, I thought the bugger was slow as hell. It gets snout. Get the mass in the pit is better. At least it's in colour. And that bloody drunk's not in it. So the next film in the series is the classic Queer to Mass in the Pit from 1967, 10 years later, with a different quarter mass. And it, it's a massive improvement, so I'll be reviewing that film shortly. So anyway, I hope you like the review, like, subscribe and share. Bye everybody, bye. Bye. Oh, thanks, Kelly. Do you want me to stay too? No, thank you. Just organize some more coffee before you leave. Cool. A woman will never, ever forgive a man that he fucks her. She is the receiver. He never forgives him if he doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> I'll buy that, sir. <laughs> I'll buy that. Nescafe. Coffee at its best.